Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with Mathematics Development and Support at National College of Ireland uh, and this short video is going to detail uh, I suppose how to undertake an independent samples t-test uh, through Excel. Okay, uh, so I suppose the first thing I should probably familiarize you with the data set. Uh, I've got two sets of data here. Uh, I've got one set of data that records the closing prices since 2001 uh, for Glambia PLC. Uh, that's a, a, a company that's floated on the Isaac Benchmark Index. And my second stock is Abbey PLC closing prices since 2001 uh, all the way up to I suppose we're going up to the year uh, 2011. Uh, so we've got a 10 year period here of closing prices. And I suppose the question I have is, uh, is there a significant difference or is there a difference between the performance of Glambia uh, stock uh, with respect to or uh, versus uh, Abbey PLC stock over this 10 year period? So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to create returns, and I'm going to I'm going to we're going to analyze returns of Glambia against returns of Abbey PLC. So let me create the returns uh, uh, that that are associated with Glambia first of all. So I'm just going to have here this is Glambia, Glambia returns, uh, and then the next column is going to be Abbey, Abbey returns for the returns associated with the Abbey stocks. Okay. So the returns of a particular stock is defined to be the difference between uh, today's price and yesterday's price uh, relative to yesterday's price. Uh, so uh, the first return for Glambia is going to be equal to, I'm going to open up a bracket here, uh, it's going to be equal to today's price for Glambia minus yesterday's price for Glambia. Okay, that gives us the difference between the, the stock prices or the movement in the stock price. If that's positive, uh, it would indicate an increase in stock price. If that difference is negative, it would indicate a decrease in stock price. But we want to, I suppose, calculate this difference uh, relative to yesterday's price. Okay, so this actually gives us the return uh, for day one uh, for Glambia. And we can probably see here it's uh, 0 0.03333 and so on. If I multiply this by 100, that will give me a percentage return. So the return expected here uh, on day two is a 3% increase with respect to day one. Okay? Uh, so I'm just going to take this, uh, I suppose, formula now, and I'm going to apply it down the column. Uh, so I'm just going to going to click the cell. I'm going to go to the right-hand corner here, and I'm going to double-click on that, which actually calculates the returns uh, for each day relative to the previous day okay, for the Glambia share price. And I'm going to do the same for the Abbey, Abbey uh, PLC returns. Uh, the return is going to be equal to uh, today's closing price minus yesterday's closing price relative to yesterday's closing price, which gives us a return of 1.2%. Uh, and once again, I'm going to double click this particular cell here in the corner where that sort of dark uh, square is to apply them returns down the Abbey column. Okay. So now we have the returns for each stock. I suppose maybe what we should do now is let's actually just have a look at the descriptive statistics associated with each one of these, uh, with each one of these particular stocks. So to get the descriptive statistics up, uh, I'm going to go to data. <laughs> uh, and on the data ribbon, I'm going to click data analysis. Okay. And what I'm going to insert here is descriptive statistics. So I'm going to select descriptive statistics, hit OK. <coughs> and the input range, I'm going to put all of my values in, including the headers, uh, from here down to the end. Okay. Uh, there are all my values now gone in. Uh, defined it within the input range. Uh, there's labels in the first row. They're grouped by columns. And my output range I'm going to find to be within this table. And I'm going to find my output range to be uh, this cell right here. And what I want is summary statistics for both my stocks. And I'm going to hit OK on that, which gives me this particular uh, output here. OK. And I'm just going to make that so that it fits in here. I'm just actually going to get rid of this column here. Okay, delete that. Okay, I'm going to delete that. Uh, shift cells to the left. Shift cells to the left. Okay, which brings that across here. And I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to put that in here. And I'm going to get rid of this here, which gives us our appropriate table. Okay, 
Let me delete that to make that a little bit neater. Okay. So what we can see is that the average return for Glambia uh, was 0.001 or a tenth of a percent, uh, where the average return for Abbey was 0 0.0003 uh, or less than uh, just a little bit more than a hundredth of a percentage point. Uh, we have the standard deviations in both cases, uh, and we have the usual the usual descriptive statistics. So what we're really interested in here is whether there's a difference between the mean returns uh, associated with both of these stocks. Okay. So to test whether there's a significant difference between both of these returns, or these average returns, uh, what we need to do is we need to do an independent samples t-test. So once again, if I hit data analysis here, and if I scroll down, there's two variants of the independent samples t-test that we can choose. Uh, we can choose a t-test uh, for two samples assuming equal variances, or a t-test for two samples assuming unequal variances. Uh, I suppose for this decision, uh, for us to decide which one of these variants of the t-test to do, we should we should try to figure out whether these variances, uh, whether the variance for Glambia is equal statistically to the variance of Abbey. And I suppose to figure that out, what we need to do is we need to do an f-test. Uh, the f-test is a test for the difference between two variances. So I need to do this as an intermediate step first. So I'm going to click on f-test. I'm going to hit OK, and now I'm going to define my two variables. Yeah, I'm going to define the Glambia variable, okay, uh, from Glambia down to the end of the data set, and then I'm going to define uh, the second variable, which is uh, the Abbey PLC variable, which is from the Abbey label uh, down to the end of the data set. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say that there's labels in there's labels in the in the in the first row. Okay. One thing to keep in mind here is that the f-test for the differences between two variants is a two-tailed test, and the alpha value that's specified here is is how much of the area we would expect in the right-hand tail. Uh, so it's a two-tailed test. So actually, I'm going to expect a p-value or sorry, a critical value that's associated with 0.025 percent of the area in the right-hand tail. Uh, so I'm going to specify alpha to be 0.025, or really I should be saying alpha over two here because it's half of alpha. And my output range is going to be within this table. Uh, I'm going to specify that to be here and I'm going to hit OK here to give me the results of my t-test. OK. Now there's two ways that we can look at this. Uh, we can do the critical value approach where we look at the F statistic and we compare it to the uh, F critical one tail value. Uh, uh, and in which case we reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than the critical value. You can clearly see that the test statistic here is 1.88, the critical value is 1.07, uh, so the test statistic is bigger than the critical value, and as such falls in the rejection region, or it falls in the right hand tail uh, rejection region. And as such, we would infer that there is a statistical difference between the variances of both of these stocks. Uh, so we need to we need to proceed to undertake a an independent samples t-test assuming unequal uh, variances. Uh, another approach that we could take is by looking at the p-value. Uh, the p-value here is 4.5 by 10 to the minus 62, uh, which is significantly less than 0 0.05, or significantly less than 0 point, uh, yeah, 0 0.05, which is for the two-tailed test. And as such, we would reject the null hypothesis also. So in either case, uh, just two alternative ways to interpret this particular uh, f-test. Uh, in either case, uh, we have a rejection of the null hypothesis. Uh, and I suppose the most important thing here is that the null hypothesis for most of our tests is one where we assume no difference. Uh, this is a test of variances, so we'd assume that there's no difference between the variance of Glambia and Abbey. That would be the null, but we're rejecting that, and as such we'll assume there is a difference between the performance or between the variance associated with both of these stocks. So we need to proceed now uh, to an independent samples t-test, uh, assuming assuming unequal population variances. So I'm going to hit OK on that. Uh, and once again, it's the same same procedure as before. We need to define our variables. Uh, the first variable I'm going to define is Glambia. Uh, actually, I'm going to make sure that I define the variable that has the highest mean first, uh, which is Glambia. So it's from Glambia. Uh, I'm going to define uh, down to the end of the data set. The second variable I'm going to define is going to be is going to be from Abbey. It's for the Abbey variable uh, down to the end of the data set. 
Uh, and my hypothesized mean difference is that there should be no difference between the two variables or between the two the two mean values. There's labels in the first row. My alpha value my alpha value is 0 0.05, my significance level. This is a two-tail test naturally, so this will split the uh, the alpha into into both tails. And my output range is going to be within this table. Uh, I'm going to define my output range to be let's say we define it to be here, and I'm going to hit OK, which gives me the output of my two sample uh, t-test assuming unequal population variances. And once again we're going to compare the t-statistic to the critical value for the two-tail. Uh, if the test statistic is greater than the critical value we reject the null hypothesis. If it's not we fail to reject it. Uh, clearly 1.2 is not greater than 1.96 and as such there's insufficient evidence to reject the null hypothesis associated with this t-test. The null hypothesis is that there's no difference uh, that there's no difference between the two population means uh, and as such we will infer in this case here that there's no difference between the two population means or sorry there's insufficient evidence to actually reject that position. Uh, okay, I know that was pretty quick, uh, but that basically is how to perform an independent samples t-test through SPSS. Oh, sorry, through Excel. Okay, so thank you for your time.